Hey, it's Chris. Are Apple's new dual USB-C 35 watt chargers worth it? There's two, we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about my favorite new iPhone accessory. Hint, it's made out of cloth, not what you think. We're gonna talk about watching YouTube on your Apple Watch and a lot more. Busy day, so let's get into it. Of all the surprise hardware announcements made at WWDC 2022, including an M2 MacBook Air and an M2 MacBook Pro, this, the dual USB-C port, 35 watt power adapter, along with this more compact companion, were definitely two of the cheapest, but that doesn't mean they're not exciting. There's definitely some people out there who are really going to appreciate these. These are now available to order. I picked up the standard size. There's also a compact size. Both are priced at 59 bucks here in the States. And while I'm guessing that the compact version is probably the size that most people are gonna be interested in just because it's new and different, I'm still interested in this standard size here because I wanna plug this into my surge protector and that means I'm looking for a vertical slimness. If you're plugging this in against a wall, you might like that new compact version because it's gonna be flatter against the wall. And there you go, two beautiful USB-C ports. Now the compact version of this is going to come with the new M2 MacBook Air as long as you get anything above the standard configuration. So if you get the M2 Air with at least the 10 core GPU and 512 gigs of storage or better, you get the compact version of this guy right in the box. But if you only get the eight core, you're gonna wind up with just a single port USB-C in the box. Now Apple does recommend these for the MacBook Air, but they're also compatible with your iPhone and also the iPad, Apple Watch, AirPods and other devices. However, I know this can all be confusing. These are not gonna be compatible. You are not gonna to wanna to use them with a MacBook Pro. The new M2 MacBook Pro ships with a 67 watt charger, almost twice the juice coming out of that thing. But interestingly, all the internal components here are completely symmetrical. The reason that's interesting to me because no one's ever gonna get in here and check it out, but Charger Labs opened this thing up and gave us a peek inside. And I remember the Steve Jobs quote that always stuck out in my head. He's like, I don't care if customers aren't gonna see stuff, like if it's in the back of a device or inside, I still want it to be beautifully laid out and designed because his dad taught him that that really mattered. The details really matter. And Apple's still up to that today. You can see everything's all symmetrical inside, just kind of a cool detail. Now, even though this thing isn't labeled compact, it still feels very small, much smaller than 20 watt USB-C brick you might be used to, except with two ports. You can see there's no Apple logo anywhere on here, just a nice, clean, minimal design. And now here's the kicker. If you plug in one device, you are gonna get 35 watts of power, but it's 35 watts max. That means if you plug two things in, that 35 watts is gonna start getting split up between the different devices, okay? And that's no different whether you get the compact version or this more traditional design here, both 35 watts. But let me just be clear, this is not the fastest way that you're gonna be able to charge stuff. What it is, is more convenient. Because however you dice things up, if you're charging more than one thing here, whether it's a Mac and an iPhone, iPhone and an iPad, Mac and an iPad, whatever it is, it's just gonna go slower if you're not doing a single charge, if you're using the dual charge. Now I believe, I could be wrong, so double check, but I believe the new MacBook Air, even though it ships with a 35 watt, can go up to 67 itself. So again, not the fastest option. Now, like Apple often does, you got this duck head component here and you can pop that off and either put in an extension cable. So if you want it to be longer, you can do that or you can switch this out for international travel. All right, now I have the actual breakdown in terms of what you're gonna get when you plug different things in here, okay? If you connect a Mac notebook and an iPhone or iPad, each device is gonna get 17 and a half watts of power, kind of splitting it right down the middle there. On the other hand, if you connect a Mac in one port and an iPhone and an Apple Watch or AirPods as well, the Mac or the iPhone can get up to 27 and a half watts of power with the rest going to those smaller devices. Now, Apple has said that the iPhone is gonna fast charge with a 20 watt adapter. But if you're dual charging this with something 17 and a half watts, that's still quicker than maybe some other options. Now, very obviously this could be good for people who are traveling or maybe at your home desk setup there, you just wanna plug two things in. You don't really care about fast charging, just gonna keep it plugged in all day. Just don't want things to die. Okay, I personally like to buy official Apple accessories. Number one, for the looks, they always look good. Number two, just for the compatibility and there's just something about having all the official stuff, right? That said, Apple stuff is almost always more expensive. It just is. So here's the thing. There are a lot of alternatives. I'm gonna link some up down in the description for you so you can check them out and see if something else makes more sense for you. Like there's a Belkin that's got a 68 watt charger with dual charging capabilities. You know, there are some other cool options and some of them are cheaper, right? So 
It's all up to you whether you like the official Apple stuff, whether you need something that's faster or not. I'll link up those alternatives so you can check them out. Speaking of cheaper, because I appreciate everybody watching right now, I wanna make sure and give you guys a deal from time to time. So I'm gonna give you half off the wallpapers for a limited time. So check out the coupon code down in the description. If you already have one of the Daily Tech wallpapers, but you saw some others that you maybe wanna load up on, now's your chance. Also, for a very limited time, let's call it the 4th of July sale, I'm gonna be giving 50% off the crypto course that I made, right? So markets are crazy, everything's tanking, unseasoned investors are like in panic mode. Seasoned investors are like, Hey, you know, there's an upside here. Things are on sale. Markets like to go up. I can get in a little bit cheaper. If you want to learn more about that and all the opportunities there, 50% off. It's the same coupon for the wallpapers and for the crypto course. It's all down in the description. But now it's time to tell you about a favorite new iPhone accessory of mine. Instagram ads, they get me pretty frequently, at least interested in something, sometimes interested enough to pull the trigger. I pulled the trigger on these. These are Viore pants. I'm actually wearing the Viore shorts. And the reason that these are accessories for iPhones, really anybody with a phone in general, doesn't have to be iPhone, is that they have this amazing pocket on the side. It's this zip pocket and it fits your phone perfectly. And you might be like, what's the big deal? A phone pocket, really? It's not really a big deal, it's nothing new. This isn't like cargo shorts, right? From the 90s or something, we got stuff hanging off. This is like a hidden pocket. And if there's one thing I hate, it's regular pockets on pants or shorts that are just too small. I don't know if they're shrinking those due to inflation <laughs> right now, like cereal boxes. But you know, I bought other shorts in the last year or two that have two short pockets. And when you sit down, your phone slides out. Honestly, clothing companies need to acknowledge that people have phones in their pocket and they're not tiny phones, right? Often they're large phones, but even I have just the 13 Pro, not even the Max right now. And it slips out of all kinds of my shorts pockets. So when I sit down and there's some concrete, and it falls onto the concrete, I'm not happy about that. Also, when I'm in the car, this is when it really gets me, and it slips out along with other things, maybe like a wallet or your keys or something, and it falls out and goes down in the crack, and then you don't know where it is. You know, you can do the air tags thing or whatever, but it's just a pain, right? This pocket has solved all my problems. I am loving these. Now, Viore makes like really high quality stuff. One of my favorite brands that I've discovered over the last couple of years, I found them in a Shields, and I tried out some of their shorts. They were so comfortable, really high quality, Interesting materials. The pants here ran $89. I don't remember what the shorts were. I'll link them up in the description so you can check them out. But they kind of have like a golfy vibe. That's what the shorts kind of remind me of. You could wear these on the golf course, but you know, you could just wear them anywhere. They're super comfy. So I mean, they're less casual than maybe other shorts, not like board shorts or something, but very high quality. And honestly, I mean it when I say this is one of my favorite iPhone accessories in a while. I'm just delighted with these. Honestly, the pocket too in the shorts, I could jog around with that and almost not even feel my iPhone in my pocket. It's crazy in that secret pocket, right? And that's not the case when you just put it in one of your front pockets. I love these. Check them out, linked up. Let's talk about AirPods Max. They're getting an update. It's been a while since they came out. I, not famously, I guess, uh, but I made a video that was called Everyone's Wrong About AirPods Max. Talked about how much I really enjoyed them, why I bought them, not just for music. Don't wanna ruin the video if you haven't seen it, but you should go check it out. One of my contrarian takes on things, but I have really, really, really enjoyed my AirPods Max. And I'm seeing that Apple recently put out an AirPods beta firmware update alongside the first builds of iOS 16 and some other operating systems. As the developers do, there was a developer that was digging around and they spotted a really interesting Bluetooth update for the Max. And what it was, was support for a higher quality Bluetooth codec, which at the very minimum for current AirPods Max owners is going to improve voice call quality. Now that's not what I'm excited about. That's good because I do take some calls while I'm at the desk and a phone call rings in, you know, and I just answer it with my Mac or whatever and it connects. The bigger news here though, is that this could be previewing a new feature, some new features, some capabilities that could be coming to the next version of AirPods, not just the Macs, maybe just the AirPod Pros. So Shrimp Apple Pro posted on Twitter that uh, he was able to enable the LC3 codec for AirPods Max through the beta firmware. And this codec, LC3, if you don't know, is a low power, high quality codec that lets you have better streaming of actual things that you care about like music uh, over this Bluetooth standard. Essentially, it transmits at lower bit rates without losing audio quality. And the reason that's a big deal is you're of course gonna like get better battery life, uh, for instance, uh, with this and better sound. Like what's not to like there? Now, this better sound requires Bluetooth 5.2 support 
no AirPods currently have Bluetooth 5.2 support. So we're basically talking about new hardware that's coming down the pipeline. Now, 9to5Mac has already confirmed that the next gen AirPods Pro, which are codenamed B698, will feature the next version of the H1 chip, which is Apple's own audio processor, which could be able to handle this technology. And it's interesting, as the tech companies are working on putting out this new LE or low energy standard, there is an Apple engineer who's been prominently involved there. So right, all the puzzle pieces are fitting together for an upgraded audio experience for AirPods users. The big question, I suppose, is are we going to get lossless Bluetooth audio? That would be a huge thing, right? Uh, there's an analyst, not gonna name them, who made a prediction about it, and no one knows. Like, that's not being confirmed with this information. Uh, potentially, maybe, wouldn't that be cool? In any case, I mean, the AirPods line is about to get a lot better. And speaking of making things better, have you checked out the Daily Tag podcast? Might make your week better. I hope so, that's the aim, it's kinda like just hanging out. I'm about to go record a new episode right now after I'm done with this. Usually comes out on Fridays, it's worth checking out. It's linked up in the description. Now as a guy who's known for recommending the best apps for your different Apple devices, best apps for your iPad, iPhone, Mac, whatever, it's been a long time since I did a best apps for the Apple Watch video. The reason is because there just haven't been that many really interesting Apple Watch apps to land in quite a while. Well, WatchTube is here and it's here to change that scenario because they've actually made an app that lets you watch YouTube videos on your Apple Watch, on your wrist. Now, I haven't actually tried it yet. I'm just letting you know about it the second I found out about it, but people are seeming to say that they like it, that it works well. There's nothing complicated to set up. It's not like a hack or a workaround or anything. You just download it and you can get it right out of the Apple Watch App Store. You don't even have to do this from your iPhone. And actually, it looks like it has a pretty good interface, right? It's not easy to navigate around something as complicated as YouTube, if you think about it. But you've got home, search, library, and settings areas that you can explore. You can see what's trending across YouTube in general. And you can also just pick a category. You know how it's got different categories, tech, crypto, architecture, whatever you're watching. Now, here's where things fall apart just a little bit and becomes a little bit less interesting or useful you can't sign in with your YouTube account here. That's kind of annoying. I'm not sure why that's a limitation. I'm sure that they didn't want to do it that way. And I'm sure there's some sort of thing in the API that's preventing that. It says you can use WatchTube to subscribe to channels and to save videos. So you can find them later. But I think what is useful, probably most useful for this, is the ability to search. It works with the new uh, Apple Watch Series 7 keyboard. So that's good. Of course, you can just use voice dictation to search for stuff too. Link this up with your AirPods, right? And you can listen to stuff that way, or you can actually just use the speaker on your actual Apple Watch. This is all very interesting. The big question is, what's the use case? Like, when are people gonna use this? <laughs> it says it does support captions and it provides options so you can change the text size of those. So you could be watching, presumably silently, and absorb stuff up. So if you're like in a boring meeting, Maybe you could be seeing what's going on if you need to zone out a little bit. One feature that I do find actually pretty interesting here though is the audio only function. So let's say you just wanna to listen to some music on YouTube, then this could be an interesting way to do that. Or sometimes I've been known to just wanna to listen to the audio of a YouTube video while I'm doing something else, getting some other work done. So if you're not actually going to be actively watching, but you do wanna get the audio, almost like a podcast, you could be able to do that here too if you got something really interesting, TED Talk or something. All right, that's gonna do it for this episode. Hopefully you have fun, enjoyed it, found something that you liked. You know, we got a clips channel. You can check that out. Obviously, check out the podcast. Check out Twitter and Instagram if you're not over there. There's lots of interesting things that get posted there that don't get posted on the YouTube channel. Some behind the scenes stuff, some Twitter threads that are nice and useful. So check all that stuff out. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.